In section 1.2, we will talk about special right triangles, but start with similar triangles. So two triangles are said to be similar if their corresponding angles are congruent and the corresponding sides are in proportion. In other words, similar triangles are the same shape, but not necessarily the same size. And here's what's true. If you take any two corresponding sides of a similar triangle, that ratio will equal to the ratio of all the other corresponding sides. So A over A1 equals to B over B1 equals to C over C1. All right, so knowing this, let's find um, the unknown lengths for the similar triangles below. Okay, so here's what we have to do. First thing is we have to start with a known ratio. So a known ratio is a ratio of two sides that we know. So we know these two sides. Now I can either take 52.5 to 35 or, the, or vice versa. Uh, it doesn't matter as long as I keep it consistent for all the other sides. So I'm, I'll keep it like this. I have 52.5 over 35 as my known ratio. Using that, we want to solve for x, and we also want to solve for y. So let's take our known ratio, which is 52.5 over 35. And if I want to solve for x, so x is in the same triangle as 52.5, which means it's going to go on the same side as 52.5, same side of the fraction. So that'll go on the numerator. The corresponding side is 84 and that will go on the denominator. Similarly, to solve for y, my known ratio is 52.5 over 35. I'm looking for y. y is in the same triangle as 52.5, so the y goes on the numerator, and the corresponding side is 91, and that's going to go on the denominator. Now to solve, so this is called a proportion. When two ratios are set equal to each other, we have a proportion. And to solve a proportion, we're going to use a method called cross multiplication. So to cross multiply, the 84 multiplies to the left, and the 35 multiplies to the right. Same thing over here, the 91 multiplies to the left, and the 35 multiplies to the right. So if I solve this, on the left side, I get 52.5 times 84. And on the right side, I get 35 times x. Now, I want to solve for x. So the inverse of multiplying by 35 is to divide by 35. So I'm going to have 52.5 times 84 divided by 35. And this will give me x equals to 126. Notice that we have units. Since these are feet, we have to always include the units, which are going to be 126 feet. So the same thing to solve for y. So we have, on the left side, we're going to have 91 times 52.5. On the right side, we have 35 times y. I want to solve for y, so I'm going to divide both sides by 35, since the inverse of multiplication is division. And if I take 91 times 52.5, and I divide by 35, this gives me y equals to uh, 136.5 feet. And again, please include units whenever units are given. Let's take a look at the next example. A 20 meter flagpole casts a shadow that is 50 meters long. Okay, so here we have a sun, not a sun, the sun. And what we have is we have a 20 meter flagpole. And the sun shines, and it's going to hit the flagpole, and it's going to cast a shadow of 50 meters. Now, how long is a shadow cast by a tree that's 36 meters high? So at the same time, there's a tree that is 36 meters, and we want to find out what is the length of its shadow, which is here. Okay, so let's use a known ratio. So our known ratio is going to be 20 to 36. We know that. So we have 20 over 36. That is going to equal 
to 50 is in the same triangle as 20, so that has to go on the same side, and the corresponding side of 50 is x. Same thing we did before, we cross multiply, so the x multiplies to the left, 36 multiplies to the right. We have 20 times x equals to 36 times 50. We divide both sides by 20. So if we take 36 times 50 and we divide that by 20, this gives us 90. Don't forget the units because this is meters. We're going to have 90 meters as the shadow of the tree that is 36 feet tall. All right, now we're going to talk about a concept that we're going to be using throughout the remainder of the semester, and we're going to be using it quite often. So we're going to be talking about two special right triangles. Now, a right triangle has to have one 90-degree angle, but the other angles could be like 20 and 70, or they could be um, like 40 and 50, right? Like we can have a right triangle with many different uh, different angles. However, this right triangle is going to be a 45, 45, 90 right triangle. And here's what it means. We know that for a right triangle, one of the angles has to be 90. Okay, that, that we can't change. But the other two angles are going to be 45 and 45. When that happens, this is called an isosceles right triangle because the sides opposite these two angles are going to be congruent since these angles are congruent. So we have an isosceles right triangle. An isosceles right triangle is a triangle in which two sides are congruent. And the two angles are 45 and 45. When that happens, we have a fixed ratio of the three sides. So opposite of 45 and 45, we're going to call that x. And opposite of 90 degrees, or the hypotenuse, is going to be whatever x is times radical 2. Whatever the length of the side is, we're going to multiply that by radical 2 to get the hypotenuse. For example, let's say that a side was, uh, this side was 6. Then the other side is also going to be 6 because 45, 45, it means the sides opposite each of the 45s will be the same. That's where the x and x is. And the hypotenuse is going to be x radical 2, which is going to be 6 radical 2. Okay, so for a 45, 45, 90 right triangle, we will always have this ratio, x, x, and x radical 2. Okay, for example, you want to find the value of x. So we have 5, 5. And then this is going to be 5 radical 2. Because this is x, this is x, and then x radical 2 is going to be 5 radical 2. The next example says, what is the height and hypotenuse of a right triangle with an angle that measures 45 degrees and a base of 14? OK, so a lot of times a visual helps. So I recommend drawing a visual. So we got a right triangle. Now, what does it say? It says, what is the height and hypotenuse of a right triangle with an angle that measures 45 degrees? So if one angle is 45 and one angle is 90, we know that all the angles of a right triangle have to, or any triangle have to add up to 180. So this one also has to be 45. So we have a 45, 45, 90 right triangle. Now, the base of a right triangle is the horizontal side. The height is going to be the vertical side. And of course, the hypotenuse is the diagonal. So it says, there's a base of 14. Well, according to our x, x, x radical 2 rule, the height will also be 14. And the hypotenuse is going to be x radical 2, so that's going to be 14 radical 2. <laughs> OK, our second type of right, special right triangle is a little more complicated. Um, so this is going to be a 30, 60, 90 right triangle. In other words, one angle 
is always 90. So this is not going to change, right? We have a, a right triangle has to have a right angle. So this is going to be 90 degrees. One angle is going to be 30 degrees, and the other angle is going to be 60 degrees. So we have x, x radical 3, and 2x. So here, how does that work? So the side opposite 30 degrees is always going to be the shortest side because this is the smallest angle. We have a smallest angle, so the smallest side is going to be opposite of that, which is going to be x. The side opposite the 60 degree angle is going to be x radical 3. And the side opposite the 90 degree angle or the hypotenuse is going to be 2x. So everything depends on the shortest side. Shortest side is x, then we have x radical 3, and then we have 2x. So in a 30, 60, 90 right triangle, our ratios are going to be x, x radical 3, and 2x. Ah. So let's apply let's apply this. Let's take a look at an example. Um, so we have the following. We have a 30, 60, 90 right triangle, which means we know the ratios are going to be x, x radical 3, and 2x. So here are some tips for solving special right triangles. Number one, draw the triangle. Write the angles and their corresponding ratios, and then solve for x, because remember, everything depends on x. If, it's, if x is not given, and if it's given, then you're, you know, it's going to be a little bit easier, but if it's not given, solve for x, and then find the other sides. Okay, for example, in this right triangle, we're given that the angle opposite 30 degrees is 4, and we want to find out c, but I, I'm also going to, just for thoroughness sake, I'm gonna, I want to find out what b is as well. So here's what I'm going to do. So what I recommend doing is writing down 30, 60, and 90, and then write down the ratios. So this is going to be x, x radical 3, and 2x. Now what do we know here? We know the angle opposite of 30, or the side opposite of 30 degrees is 4. So the value of x is going to be 4. And so x radical 3, this is going to be 4 radical 3. And 2x is going to be 2 times 4, which is going to be 8. So this side here is going to be 4 radical 3. And this side here is going to be 8. So always write down the angle, the equivalent ratio, and then fill in whatever you know. All right, let's take a look at another one. So if this angle is 30, then the other one has to be 60. Because if this is 90, these two angles have to add up to 90 since the whole triangle adds up to 180. So if this is 30, the other angle has to be 60. So let's write down 30 degrees, 60, and 90. Opposite of 30 is always going to be x. Opposite of 60 is always going to be x radical 3. And opposite of 90 is 2x. I recommend starting off with these um, um, with this step first. Always start there. Now, what do we know? We know that the, op the side opposite of 60 is 4 radical 3. Okay, so I'm going to say that x radical 3 here, this thing, that's the side opposite of 60, that equals to 4 radical 3. Now, if I want to solve for x, I'm going to divide both sides by radical 3, and I'm going to get x equals to 4. So this tells me that the side opposite 30 degree angle is equal to 4. And the side opposite 90 is going to be 2 times that, 2 times 4, which is going to be 8. Okay, this next one we will do in class. And then the remainder of the examples we will also cover in class.